Hello and welcome. One of the first videos that I've done on my YouTube channel was back in 2018 about the solar installation that I did in 2017 and the costs around it. If you're interested in watching that video, I'll put a card here to that. A year later, I did a review where I showed how much our solar production had been versus our home power consumption. And I'll put a link here to that video as well. Well, now we are three years later. So what I want to do in today's video is go over that same, those same graphs, but now expanded to include a full three year period of time and how well our solar has produced versus how well our uh, home has consumed that electricity. And to throw into the mix, we now have two electric vehicles. We have a, a 2013 Nissan Leaf and we have a 2015 Tesla Model S. So let's jump into the data. We'll get into the graphs in just a moment, but first I wanted to show where all the data is coming from. So this I have been compiling in Google Sheets, and all of these numbers are actually derived from these three gray columns here at the beginning. The first two being numbers that come off the electric meter on the side of that, my house from Rocky Mountain Power, and this third one being num uh, the production numbers coming from my solar edge inverter. And then the rest of these are all just calculated from those columns. We have total production, we have total production value, the net grid, uh, total overall time, we have the daily net grid, uh, my estimated Rocky Mountain Power net metering balance, my official net metering balance from Rocky Mountain Power, how much was used directly cumulative, uh, used directly daily, how much was consumed daily, the total that has been consumed overall time, how much money that is worth, daily used value, and then the daily used kilowatt hours, and then how many kilowatt hours went to electric vehicles. I know I went over that really fast, but I just don't want to believe the point, but we'll get into the graphs now and you'll see where this data came into play. So first we'll go over here to the daily solar production. If I mouse over this, you'll see that in the beginning when we had a 6.38 kilowatt solar array, uh, we were peaking at around 45 kilowatt hours a day. Typically it got up to 46 or so. But you know, when the winter dips down in the summer, it goes back up and then the weather causes this variance all the way along. In the springtime is when you really start to put away a lot of energy for the rest of the year. And with our net metering balance with Rocky Mountain Power, it basically rolls over from day to day to month to month. But each March billing cycle of every year, if you have a positive net metering balance, then they reset it to zero. And for me, that comes usually around March 25th through March 28th. It's inconsistent yearly, but that's about where it gets reset. In any case, uh, you can see there's this jump in the uh, solar production, and that is because we added an additional 3,600 watts of solar in July of 2019. And I did that because we had just bought our Tesla Model S, which if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll put a card here to the video about uh, us purchasing that. And so we were consuming more electricity, obviously, because we're now driving on electricity. And so that's where I added these additional panels. And so our production jumped up correspondingly. And so now we're getting like 64, 65 kilowatt hours a day in August. And then we head into that next winter and you can see our, our overall production is higher than it was the year before. And then the, the next spring we peak at 70.11 kilowatt hours of production in one day with our 9.98 .9 kilowatt solar array. So now let's jump over here to daily used. So this is now obviously how much we're consuming in, in the home. And these graphs go from the very beginning. So this is back to August 15th when our solar array went online in 2017. And then it goes all the way through to August 14th of 2020. So this is a complete three years. And so you can see our consumption kind of spiked there in the fall. We were doing a lot of canning and whatnot. And then uh, it went through the winter. Our electricity consumption was typically pretty low. And then here in February of 2018, we purchased our Nissan Leaf. However, I was actually charging it exclusively at work. So it doesn't really get reflected here in our consumption much at all. Uh, our consumption peaked in uh, September as we were using a lot of air conditioning and canning and whatnot. And then here around May of 2019 is when we purchased our Tesla Model S. And uh, then you can start to see our consumption is rising. And then we go on a trip here. So we're away from home for uh, a couple weeks. So our consumption dropped off. And then I installed our additional solar and then we were at home again driving and whatnot. So our consumption jumped back up and we have some pretty high days here. And uh, this one right here, this dip is from when we went on a trip to Orlando, Florida in our Tesla Model S. If you're interested in watching a playlist of that trip, I'll put a card here that jumps out to that playlist. 
And so our consumption drops down whenever we're out of town, obviously, because we're not home to, to use it. And then our consumption actually peaked at about 134 kilowatt hours in one day. And that day we had gone on a couple of trips and come home and charge, charge the car. And also over here on this day, we charged a friend's car, uh, their Tesla Model X. Actually, I have some notes here that I've added uh, so you can get a feeling of some of the things that we've done that caused extra high uh, consumption on certain days. Right here is where we purchased our Tesla. And then we have a freeze dryer that we use periodically that we borrow and, and you know use between family members. And so I put notes here when the freeze dryer is being used and you can see that causes a lot of extra consumption. And uh, so yeah, we have our friend's Model X here and then some other trips we've got on. This rock climbing trip, this is one that I have actually have made a video about and uploaded here on my channel. And so I'll put a card here out to uh, that trip. That was fun. And then Skull Valley is another one that I've yet to make that I'll be making uh, shortly, hopefully. All right, so let's jump over here to daily used with EV charging. So now what I'm trying to overlay is how much was consumed that day versus uh, how much of that that was consumed was sent to an electric vehicle. So the black is what was consumed and the red is what went to an electric vehicle and the stars is the data point. Uh, sometimes there's a trend line, sometimes there's not. I'm not sure why Google Sheets does that. But in any case, you can see whenever there are really high spikes, definitely the majority of that electricity went to an electric car. There's a couple of exceptions to that, like this one right here, 53 went to the car, but the overall for the whole day was 106. So we definitely consumed a lot that day for the whole house. Our electricity consumption has definitely accelerated in the last year. We, we use a lot more and I would attribute that almost exclusively to our Tesla Model S. If we look here, this is now our production versus consumption. So the black is the power production from our solar and the red is the consumption from either the home and or electric vehicles. And you can see right here, this spike starts in July of 2019 and that's when I expanded our solar array. So now we are producing a lot more and that's why you can see the black here jumps up. And that's also when we had our Tesla and so we were consuming a lot more. So the consumption and versus the production starts to become more dramatic because we have a lot more production and a lot more consumption. And you can see the cycles of the years as we go into the winter goes down and then we go into the spring comes up. When you can see a predominance of black, that means we're producing a lot more than we're consuming in that time frame. And this is in the spring. So you'll see here that's uh, April. And so that happens there and this, this is another uh, springtime of April again where we're producing more than we're consuming. All right, so then let's jump over here to daily produced versus what was sent to EVs. So now this is the black is what solar is being produced and then the red is what is being consumed by electric vehicles. So you can see generally um, the electric vehicles don't consume more than what was produced that particular day. However, there are some spikes here where that definitely happened. Um, and so our peak one right here is March 9th where we consumed um, 106 kilowatt hours in one day, but we produced very little that day. So it was a very huge difference, but that's what the joy of net metering is, is uh, we're obviously crediting ourselves, our net metering balance, whenever we produce uh, what we uh, aren't using and sending it out to the grid. And then whenever we need that back, we just take it back. And in our case, the net metering agreement is just a one-to-one -one ratio. We have no cost to using the grid other than just a flat $9 per month fee for a net metering balance. All right, so this is daily used directly with total consumed. So the, the red here is what was used that particular day, and the, the yellow is what was directly consumed that day from the solar. So basically what this means is if, if we charged in our electric car throughout the, the peak of the bell curve of the day, then the majority of the electricity that was produced from our solar that day would have gone into the car or at least been consumed by the home. And so some of these days over here, for right here for instance, uh, we actually had a peak of our daily used directly was 44 kilowatt hours. And, and so we actually consumed quite a bit of the electricity that day that was produced that day because we were probably charging our car during that time frame. So this is kind of an interesting way to see how much was being produced and of what was produced, how much of it we consumed in the moment that it was being produced across all of these three years. All right, now we have our monthly figures. So this is showing our by month how much was produced versus how much was consumed. So the production is black and the consumption is red. If you look over here to the far right side, this number right here, 584, is how much electricity on average we are home consumed per month. And that's an average over about two and a half years. 
And then we started to install solar panels and then we got electric vehicles. And now our running average over the last three years is 1,041 kilowatt hours per month consumed. Now in Utah, the average is 745 kilowatt hours. So use these bars over here as reference points to look across this graph and you'll see, yeah, we're higher electricity consumers on average now than most, at least Utahns. But that's no surprise considering we have electric vehicles and we have solar, so it's plentiful. It's, it's almost, it feels like it's free, but it's, you could think of it as prepaid for. Uh, once we break even, then it will be genuinely free at that point for sure. And so we have some months that were quite different than others where we just consumed a lot for whatever reason. I won't get into that, but you can see there's this definite cycle. You can see it repeating from the winter to the summer. Uh, daily used directly. So this is the same daily number of how much electricity was used directly, but doesn't have anything else overlaid on it. And then we have daily net grid. So for each day, uh, that particular day, we may have produced a, a net positive or it might have been a net negative. Sometimes we produce very little, like if there's snow on the panels and then we still are using electricity that day, so we'd run a negative. You'll see over here there's a general down curve in the winter time and then when we start to get into the spring and summer, then we're generally running positive for the spring. And then right here, you'll see this is July. So we're often breaking even from July through August and into September. You know, some days are positive, some are negative, but generally we're about on the trend line on the neutral because our electricity is being consumed by air conditioning a lot in those cases. And then we start to run into the winter months. And so we're running some deficits. This is October. For some reason, October tends to produce pretty well and we're not using electricity for air conditioning anymore. And so that tends to be a net positive in October. And then we run into some heavy deficits going into December, January. And then around February is when it starts to start to break even a bit. And then March, the days are getting really long. And so our production starts to ramp up pretty well. Then you can see just the swings in electricity consumption versus production starts to get more dramatic when we then have a larger solar array and electric vehicles, especially the Tesla consuming a lot of energy. So this is our all time net grid, meaning so when we first installed the system back over here, we ran negative for just a tiny bit in August and then we started to produce more and we started running positive and then we ran some negative and, and so you can see basically for all time, this is how much electricity we've consumed versus produced. And so this is a cumulative figure. And the first year we were, you know, we had a net balance of up to 800 almost kilowatt hours in the day, 810 looks like, and our net metering balance. And then we used up that whole net metering balance and ended up running a deficit all the way down to negative one megawatt hour. And then it comes back up, et cetera, and just comes and goes. And this is just a fun number to keep track of over the years of, you know, for all time, what is our, our footprint uh, in the world of electricity consumption? And right now we're in the positive, but sometimes we're in the negative. It just depends on the season. Now, if we look at the estimated net metering balance, this is the, the red dots here is the official uh, bill that I get from Rocky Mountain Power showing what our net metering balance is. And then this yellow trend line is me estimating where we're at. And you'll see that it works almost perfectly. It's always within just a couple of kilowatt hours because of the time difference of when I'm reading the meters versus when Rocky Mountain Power does. And so you'll see that that's pretty accurate. Now, what happened here is we ran a deficit and then we had at the end of the month, our bill came due. And because we had a deficit at that time, we had to pay an electric bill for this first little bit. But then we ran a positive for a bit, came down negative, ran a positive. So then when we got over here to the end of the year between 2018 and into 2019, we had used up so much electricity that we actually had to pay for electricity for a couple of months. I know the horror. <laughs> <laughs> this is, these are the only times, these four times are the only times we've paid for electricity since we got solar installed. And so we have a couple of times where we had to pay around 25 to $35 worth of electricity for these winter months. And then we started running a positive balance again and we've never run out since then. All right, so this is cumulative produced versus cumulative consumed. And so the red is used and the yellow is produced. And you'll see that it kind of, there's just this gradual variance between the two. You know, when you start getting to June, then you know, we've, produ uh, you, we've used more than we've produced. And then sometimes we've produced more than we've used. So just kind of, there's this ballet between the two, uh, generally keeping up with each other in our case. 
All right, average daily consumed. So this is a running average that is cumulative from the beginning. So it was really more erratic in the beginning because they had less data to go off of. And it's been getting more steady and solid as time has progressed because it has more days to calculate into the average. So once again, this is the full three years average here. And so our current average is now trending for 34.7 kilowatt hours consumed per day. I hope that was helpful seeing a real world example of a home using electricity and having the solar power produce that electricity. And then in our case, we threw into the mix adding our cars into that. So now we no longer have a gasoline bill and we just drive around and use whatever electricity we want in our house and our solar produces more than we uh, have been consuming in the past. And so we've actually somewhat raised our electricity consumption to try to match that production because in our case, it's use it or lose it. As a side note, yes, the panels are super dirty right now in this video from a long dry summer. Comment down below if you'd like me to do a video where I clean the solar panels and then compare the production of a full day of dirty panels and a full day of clean panels. Now, in hindsight, would I do this again? Absolutely. I absolutely have been loving having solar. It's very liberating just having your electricity prepaid for and just generated from the sun. Now, my costs for installation after my tax rebates was $1.05 per watt. Tesla's prices are now $1.49 per watt. And so in hindsight, or at least it just how things are in today's world three years later, I would probably just go ahead and hire Tesla to do it because it was a lot of work to do it myself. But I did enjoy the process of learning, of course. If you're interested in having Tesla install solar on your roof, feel free to use my referral code down below in the description of this video, and you will get $100 credit off of your solar installation. If you're interested in other videos in the future that I'll be uploading about our Tesla road trips or solar production or other technology that interests me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Change that bell notification to all and you'll be notified automatically every time I upload a new video. And with that, thanks for watching.